Hello, I'm Philip Cameron, and I am so glad you have joined me today. I believe God has set this thing up in destiny, because today you're going to hear a story of redemption. We can get so caught up in just the mechanics of church that we forget the fact that this is about a Savior who died on the cross to save the world. And you're going to hear a story today that will blow your mind. A young girl that sat lost with no hope until someone cared enough to go and find her for the gospel. I'm so glad you joined me today. This is Daily Faith. different side of the world, on the other side of the world, is a world that you would not believe exists. In orphanages in Eastern Europe, European kids live in the middle of hell. They live in institutions and when they turn 16 they're put on the street and they're just left. And the country that burdened my heart particularly is a country called Moldova. And someone told me that 400,000 girls, 400,000 girls have been sold into sex trafficking. And God sent us there 30 years ago to Romania, 20 years ago to Moldova. And we have found the most miraculous things taking place. Because when we get these kids before the traffickers and take them into our homes and tell them about Jesus, a transformation takes place that is beyond anything I could have ever dreamed. There's a song that absolutely describes how I feel right now. And it says this, No one ever cared for me Like Jesus There's no other friend so kind as he no one else could take the sin and darkness from me I love you Jesus oh how much he cares for me. I want you to meet a girl called Dasha that we found one day on a park bench in an orphanage about to be put on the street with not a hope on earth of making it. I asked her one day, I said, Dash, what would have happened if we hadn't found you that day in the park bench? And as quick as a flash, she says, Dad, I'd be dead by now. She's not dead. She's very much alive. She's part of our ministry. She works in the ministry here in America. As our liaison between America and the ministers we have in Eastern Europe. And I know this, that you are going to love this girl. And you're going to hear the gospel. Not through the church that we know it by. But by the grace of God that found its way into an orphanage. Melody took the time to sit down and listen to Dasha's story. Watch this. Today we have another special guest with us. Uh, we've been telling you all kinds of incredible stories about the young men and women of the orphan's hands. And we have another um, one of those girls here today. We have Dasha Roshka. Her name is actually Feodosia Roshka. Um, we met Dasha in the largest orphanage in the Republic of Moldova. How many kids were in your orphanage? Dasha? When I got there, it was 800. 800 kids in one orphanage. It was like a city of children. It was, it was mind-blowing and heartbreaking all at the same time. Um, tell us a little bit about how you came to be in the orphanage at Strashane. Um, well, my mom got pregnant um, out of wedlock, mm -hmm. so my dad 
wanted nothing to do with me. He left, I never saw him. My mom became an alcoholic when I was two years old. She decided that the best thing she could do for me was to leave me with my uncle and his wife. She went away to live her life, went away to Russia. I would only see her twice a year if I was lucky. Yeah. Um, after a few years of being told that that was a mistake that my mother has made, um, that I'll grow up and become just like her, um, they decided that um, the best thing they could do for me was put me in an orphanage where at least I would have a stable life. That's what they call it. Um, I got there when I was 11 years old. And um, by that time, I knew that I wasn't wanted, um, that I wasn't loved. But it's a big difference between knowing that you're not loved and not wanted and getting to a place where you realize that 800 other lives around you are also unwanted and unloved. And it was the worst feeling I've ever had in my life. And I've had a few of those. And um, mm -hmm. I spent the next five years there um, thinking that I was nothing, that um, I'll grow up and become nothing. And um, everyday teachers would tell us that we were uh, also mistakes, that nobody cared about us, that we have no space in this world, we shouldn't be alive. So, um, you know, you, you, you go every day thinking and believing everything and not seeing um, any worth in your life. Right. So. I can understand that. It's incredible. What was, what was the phrase that they always told you? Nothing plus nothing will we always equal nothing. nothing. Can you imagine hearing that every day of your life? Nothing plus nothing will always equal nothing. You are nothing plus the nothing of your life, and you will never be nothing. That is, I can't, the fact that you're sitting here today is a miracle, Dasha. It really, really is. So um, as we've been telling our viewers, uh, our, our friends, that once you get to 16 years old in the orphanage, they're put out in the street. And you lived this whole life within the walls of an orphanage. Yes, it was um, the first day you get there, basically, you, all you think about is how to escape that place. Yeah. You don't want to be there, you hate being there. Um, then the next phase comes in when you just accept your faith and you go through every single day thinking, well, this is my life, you know, I, I got no other place. And then the third phase comes when you know uh, you're a few months away from being put out of the orphanage, the only place that you knew as your home. So you start um, that s being scared and terrified, you know, and thinking about where your meals are going to come from, you know, once you're out, outside the orphanage gate. A and that, that terrified me. So every kid in that place went through these three phases in their, in their life. Yeah. And um, Dad has told the story about how he's told the story of the 18 girls on a park bench. And that was at Dasha's orphanage at Strachane. And Dasha was sitting on that bench that day, weren't you, Dasha? Yes. And we were actually painting our rooms because we were like a month away from leaving the orphanage. Yeah. So the last thing they made us do was to paint our rooms and clean everything up because um, to make sure that the next kids are going to come in, they're going to have. Um, a clean place. Yeah. But the one thing they told us um, when we were doing that is make sure you do a good job because one day your kids are going to end up in the same place. Your kids will be here too. Yes. And uh, we were, while we were busy doing that, someone um, called us over in front of our school to meet you guys. And we were like, you know what? We're about to be out of here. No more Americans looking at us. We're done. So the second time, someone else came and called us over again. So we decided to go. And I just kind of sat on the bench, uh, indifferent. That's one feeling I would describe that I had. Um, because I, I thought, that point. I gave up at that point, And I was like, you know, a few more Americans telling us that God loves us. And then they're out of here. Well, we're left dealing with the same life we've been dealing. And then a month from now, back on, on the street, so I didn't care. Um, I couldn't hear a word what you guys said until dad and you, I think someone sat next to me and told me that I was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, I, I began listening. And when you guys told us about, you know, that you give kids like me opportunities for a better future, you gave me hope. And I remember that after you guys left, 
Up until that point, nobody told me that I was beautiful. And after you guys left, we went to lunch. And it was like I had a seed of hope inside. And I asked my teacher, you know, will I get this chance to, you know, join this big family and um, have a better opportunity for my future and stuff? And she said, no, because you have a mom. You're not a complete orphan. So you don't get this opportunity. Right. So it was given to me and taken away right. in the same day. Your hopes were yes. raised and dashed yes. within a matter of hours. Yes, and, and that, that was one thing in an orphanage. If you weren't a complete orphan, you'd be t treated different. Yeah. Because all, you know, and, and that's okay, I guess. But I left the orphanage, um, and a month after that. Let me ask, let me interrupt you. Um, we talk about trafficking on this program. Were you guys made aware of trafficking and the dangers that were out there once you left the orphanage? Was, was that something that you had been taught about? Yes, we were shown one time, we were 16 before we left the orphanage. Mm -hmm. They uh, gathered us and showed us a movie called Lilia Forever. Yeah. And I was about a girl that ends up being trafficked and um, I think she ends up being, dying, killing herself. Um, and we were told about, you know, make sure you don't trust people and all that stuff. And then that yeah, was the that end of it. Does that register as it's time to leave? Does that, yeah, is it, that in your mind? Does that even register? Or what? It does register, but what do you uh -huh. do when you end up on the street and, you know, you've got no bed to go sleep to, you have no meals, you've got nothing. So what do you do? You sit on that street or you take the chance of, you know, a stranger coming up to you and saying, um, I got a job for you. Of course you're going to take it. Yeah. It, you, don't, you don't think about where that job is going to lead, you know, in the life that you might have. Yeah, you're thinking about the so, Yes, today. Now, how am yes, I going to survive today? today? Yes. Yeah. So Dasha was one of three girls out of 18 that was chosen that day because we didn't, we didn't have the space for any more than three in our houses. Um, what went through your mind when you walked through the door? Um, the house? Well, but by the time I was given this chance, mm -hmm. I had given up on everything. I, was no, I wasn't in school or anything. It was the day I gave up on my life, I got the phone call to come and join Now, when you say family. gave up on your life, what do you mean by that? I just, I was done. You're done? Yes, I, I was done. I, I went home to my mom's house and I said, I'm done. I don't want to do anything. There's, that's it. And that night, I got a phone call from our director, orphanage director, and she told me, they're giving you a chance. And the next day, I was in you guys' home. I went to bed in a clean bed, and I had meals <laughs> during the day. And I went back to school, started school again with hope. And, um, but what I want to say is that the healing didn't happen overnight. Of course. I was, years. It was, yes. Years of I was about a year in when I began mm -hmm. digging in. and Dasha was the saddest, most broken soul I think we'd ever, ever seen walk through the doors of our houses. I mean, just, she just kind of like walked through the house and kind of just like, you know, she, you'd see her moving by, but she was just kind of, she was like empty. You're just empty and... I kept telling my mom I want to be invisible. Little by little, that you could see the change coming in. It was just hope kind of like growing and growing and growing and growing. And I think what helped is that it's you guys have proved, you know, your love to me and to other kids by being there for us every single day and helping us, you know, work through our uh, tragedies and whatever affected us. And Right, because so many times you guys would tell us, people will come into the orphanage and say, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you, but... Yeah, and then they left, and but you were... What is love to a child who... Well, has a no child that was told that, you know, you're stupid, you're ugly, yeah. you, nobody wants you, nobody loves you, so it's... You so don't you know what that means. You have to really yes. start from the very bottom, and yes. that starts with everyday things. Yes. Um, so here you are. How many years later? 10, 11, 11. 11. Yeah. And Dasha is one of the most um, integral parts of the orphan's hands. She's kind of a go-between um, here in the US 
and everything that goes on in Moldova. All these stories and all these um, families who go and visit and kids that we bring into the homes. This girl right here is the one who leads it all. So that story from nothing plus nothing will always equal nothing is sitting here. She graduated from the University of Auburn with honors, dean's list, I mean all, this girl is, she took her opportunity and ran with it. And um, we spent so much time on this show talking about household salvation. And tell us a little bit about your household salvation story, Dasha. Um, well, I wasn't by myself in the orphanage and, you know, thinking today, um, I don't think I would have made it through every tragedy in my life without having my three cousins Mm -hmm. uh, with me through everything since we were born the day we were born we have been together since and um, once I came and joined your family and was given this opportunity I couldn't um, be healed completely knowing that my three cousins are out there being lost not with no hope yeah. I couldn't have joy knowing that so uh, over the years, all three of them have become part of your family. You guys have given them a chance as well. And um, all three of them are saved, love Jesus, and are also, um, two of them are still serving in the ministry. Uh, also very important parts of what we do. Yes. Andre yeah. is a house parent to 10 boys, him and his wife. Uh, Recently married to a girl yes. who loves Jesus. Yes. Who also grew up in an orphanage. Yes. Um, the stories, the stories, the stories of these lives is just, hopefully we have the opportunity to introduce you to so many more of these because they're all, all their stories are just incredible. But yeah, it's just that all her, um, Dasha, her cousin Nadia, who, um, as we talked about in Vatra, she's the one that has done all the interior design of the homes and Andre is a house parent for our young men. Um, so it's just incredible. As we say, if you were born God has a plan for your life. You might be wondering why you've maybe come to your end and saying, I'm done. I'm done. I, I don't want to wake up tomorrow morning. I'm, I'm through. But if you just hold on, that same day, she got the call that she was going to come into our home and be a, part of, um, be a part of our ministry. So when you feel like you're at the very end of your rope, please, Please, hold on just a little bit longer. God knows where you are. He sees you. Don't give up because he has a future and a plan for you that is more than anything you could ever, ever dream. So Dasha, thank you for telling your story today. Thank you. And your testimony is incredible. Thank and we you. can't wait to see what God does with your life. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Wow. I can only say, I would like to tell you what I think of Jesus. Since I found in him a friend so kind and true, I would tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. Aren't you glad for that? There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. Dasha sat on a bench and the 
sorrow and misery I saw in her was what made me go over and sit with her and t tell her that God loved her and he cared and there was a place for her to come. When she came, she was so broken that she wouldn't participate. She would hide behind doors, stay in her room. And little by little, the gospel got into her heart. She learned to speak English. And one day, we were driving back to our house in Montgomery in our van, and she sat behind me, put her arms over my neck, and, and just kind of hugged me. And in best English she knew how, began to tell me of all the pain and all the sorrow. Eight hours, I fell asleep. She kept talking. And when she'd finished, she was completely healed. Let me tell you this, the rest of the story. Dasha works in America now with us. She has rebuilt the house of the woman, her mom, who put her in the orphanage. She cares for her family. And I know some of the stories, and I've said, my God, I could choke these people for doing this to you. And she would say, Philip, our dad, how will we reach them for the gospel if we don't forgive them? I have never met anyone like these kids. And there are so many more sitting like Dasha was, in utter despair with no hope, nowhere to go, no money, no food. We'll take the risk of getting into a car and being used 30 to 50 times a day by the traffickers. And we, you and I, stand between them and that. Stand between Dasha in the back door of the trafficker's car. And I'm asking you today to help us. We need a miracle of God. We're building a village right now, and we are coming up to the deadline, and we just don't know how God's going to meet the need, but he's never failed this yet. We lack $140,000 to finish Vatra Village, where we can take 90 more Dashas, 90 more. And we just need you to stand with us and say, we'll help and we'll give. 140 people watching me just now, giving $1,000, and the need goes away. One person saying, I can give that, I'll take care of it, and the need goes away. Pray right now, will you please, to help us finish this village so we can take more dashes in and give them hope. You say, well, Philip, I don't have $1,000 to give. It's, it's way more than I have. Can you give a dollar a day? The nuts and bolts, the blood, the lifeblood of the ministry is people giving a dollar a day. You can change your life, is what I always say, for a dollar a day. If someone hadn't been given a dollar a day to help me when I met Dasha, she wouldn't be here. I, I asked her one day, I says, where would you be if Dad hadn't come? And she says, Dad, I'd have been dead. A dollar a day saved Dasha's life. And I want you to pray right now and say, Lord, would you ha have me to be a part a dollar a day. The number's on your screen. If you want to call 833-DAILY-FAITH. 833-DAILY-FAITH. And just say, I want to give towards Vatra. And you can tell them how much you want to give to help finish the buildings. Or you can say, I want to become part of a dollar a day. I'll give it a dollar a day to help these kids learn about Jesus, keep them away from the traffickers. If it were your granddaughter, if it were your daughter, wouldn't you, wouldn't you wish someone would sit and beg for them like I am? You have incredible power in your hands. You have the power of life and death. Go to your phone right now, Daily Faith. 1-833-DAILY-FAITH. And just say to the person who picks up the phone, I'm watching Philip right now and I want to be a part of saving lives. 
and you can count me in to be one of those partners to give a dollar a day. And I know in my spirit, I don't know why this, but I know in my spirit, someone's watching and you have the means to turn this whole house, the village of Vatra, and have it finished so we can get to work. You know how frustrating it is to need the money to finish a building and know that there are lives that are being lost while you're trying to finish a building. Do you know how the pain it is when you're trying to finish a building and you know there are kids that are slipping through into eternity for lo just loss? You can change that by a phone call. We love you. We need you in our lives. We need to help us change these lives. 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds a testimonial book of the lives changed by the orphans hands if you want to join philip and chrissy in taking care of these precious young people please contact us today by calling 833 daily faith you can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to post office box 242246 montgomery alabama 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILYFAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124.